So let's begin this video by looking at these organic reactions. Now you must be wondering what are these big molecules doing in our P block element video, right? Well, for starters, let me tell you that as we learn more about any particular subject, all of these distinctions like organic, inorganic, physical, all of these start blurring out, you know. They don't really make much sense after a certain point. It's all just science. Nevertheless, we will still figure out what these reactions or big molecules as we say are doing in this video. For now, what I want you to do is pay attention to the reagents, you know, the catalyst that is used in these reactions. See what is happening with them. Don't worry about these big molecules, you know, or how this reaction is occurring. Ignore all of that and simply pay attention to what a group 13 elements are doing here. Okay? So pause the video and see if you can figure it out yourselves. So well, here we are. And what do we see? Well, one of the first things that you will notice is that all of our group 13 elements have acquired a negative charge. For instance, if you look at the first reaction, the lone pair of electrons on nitrogen have gone to boron and nitrogen acquires a positive charge and boron gets a negative charge. In the second reaction, something happens to this particular alkyl chloride such that we get a carbocation. But look what's happening to our aluminum chloride. AlCl3 becomes AlCl4 and aluminum gets a negative charge. And what about the third reaction? Yes, it looks complicated, but all we need to do is simply look at what's happening to gallium, correct? Gallium again ends up getting a negative charge even though it is GaCl3. So what's happening here is the triple bond or the pi electrons here have shifted to gallium and here carbon gets a positive charge and gallium gets a negative charge. So in general, you can see that all of these elements are accepting a pair of electrons. And what else is common between all of them? Well, you can see that they are all in their trivalent state as well. So what is trivalent state? That is, they are in their plus 3 oxidation state. Okay, so what exactly is going on here? Well, one of the characteristic features of group 13 elements is that all of these elements form electron deficient compounds in their trivalent state. And it's not just halides of group 13, hydrides like BS3, ALS3, all of these compounds are also electron deficient in nature. In other words, they all act as lowest acids. And that's what we will see in this video. We will see why they act as lowest acids and where can we use this particular behavior. Now, as we know, group 13 elements have three electrons in their valence shell. 2 electrons in s orbital and 1 electron in p orbital, right? So that means to attain a stable electronic configuration, it needs to lose 3 electrons or gain 5 electrons. And what do you think it would prefer? Losing 3 electrons or gaining 5 electrons? Of course this, right? Why would any atom want to gain 5 electrons and become so unstable? That means in their group oxidation state, which is plus 3, the central atom will end up having only 6 electrons around it. For instance, let's assume that E is one of our group 13 elements and whether these elements lose electrons or share electrons with another atom, we can see that at the end of the day, the central atom has only 6 electrons around it. That means it has an incomplete octet. And this inherent electron deficient nature comes in pretty handy for us and we can use these compounds as lowest acids. Now what does a typical lowest acid do? They simply accept a pair of electrons from an electron rich species or a lowest base to form a complex or an addict, right? For instance, let's take BCL3 as a lowest acid and when it reacts with an electron rich species or a lowest base like ammonia, we know that the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom goes to boron, correct? So finally, we end up getting BCL3 minus and NH3 plus. So this is how a typical Lewis acid base reaction looks like. So let's now see how this behavior or the ability of group 13 elements to act as a Lewis acid helps us in organic reactions. Okay, so let's look at our first reaction here. Here you can see that BF3 is reacting with a carbonyl compound that is a compound which has C double bond O group. 
Now here, BF3 not only acts as a Lewis acid, but also as an activating agent for this particular reaction. See, we will not go into the details of the mechanism here, but what we mean by activating is that we need more positive charge on the carbon atom here. Now that can happen if this electron density on the pi electrons gets shifted upwards. And that's exactly what happens as you can see here. Now the question is, how does our Lewis acid or BF3 help in activating this particular reaction? Well, you see, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom acts as a Lewis base and BF3 here is obviously our Lewis acid, right? And what happens in a typical Lewis acid base reaction? Well, the lone pairs go into the electron deficient boron atom. But where in the boron atom does it go? We know that the electronic configuration of boron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. That is, there is only one electron in the p orbital. That means we still have empty p orbitals available, right? And that's exactly where the lone pair of electrons go. So as you can see here, not only is our empty p orbital getting filled, but boron finally gets a complete octet. So this is how BF3 or a Lewis acid helps in activating this reaction. The carbon ends up getting a more positive charge and boron has a complete octet. Now something quite similar happens in this particular reaction as well. But instead of oxygen, it is a lone pair of electrons on the chlorine that goes into the empty p orbitals of aluminium. And when that happens, you get the intermediate which is CS3CO plus and aluminium becomes negatively charged that is AlCl4 minus. Or in other words, you have your aluminium with completely satisfied octet. Now benzene reacts with this particular intermediate and gives you the final product here. So we won't get into the details of the reaction here again, but what you need to know is that the driving force for this reaction is the need for aluminium to get a complete octet. Now there is another interesting thing about this reaction. You see, when we carry out this reaction in laboratory, we make sure that there is absolutely no trace of water. Now why is that? Because if you have water, you know the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom can go into the aluminium, right? I mean, as far as a group 13 element is concerned, all it needs is a complete octet. It can be from the lone pair of electrons of oxygen of water or from this particular compound. So in order for water to not interfere in this reaction and generate this intermediate, we have to make sure that the reaction is carried out in an anhydrous environment. Now let me ask you something. Do you think that this electron deficient nature of all of these group 13 elements is the same? Well, turns out that this trend actually decreases down the group. That means BCl3 is a better Lewis acid than AlCl3, which is a better Lewis acid than GaCl3 and so on. Now, why do you think this happens so? Well, one of the reasons is that the stability of the plus 3 oxidation state decreases down the group. But more importantly, electronegativity also decreases down the group. Now, as we know, electronegativity is a tendency of an atom to attract an electron pair. So if that goes down, it means that the Lewis acid nature also decreases, right? That means the compounds no longer become interested in taking up electrons or act as a good Lewis acid. And that's exactly what happens here. So folks, that's pretty much it about the electron deficient nature of group 13 elements. So I hope you now have a fair understanding of why group 13 elements are electron deficient and where we can use their Lewis acid nature.